Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of relationships and graphs. The title is Calculating Slope. A little bit more of a math video, but I'm going to try and tie it in so you kind of see a little bit of um, why that is a physics topic. All right, so first of all, let's just review what we learned about graphs. In the first video that I made under this topic, which was titled Experiments and Variables, we learned that graphing is a good way to show results. Okay, so graphs are a good way. We get all this data from, from a, an experiment, and we can show that in one nice picture in a graph. Uh, something that we aren't really covering here and not, haven't really covered already, but I wanted to introduce it, is that each of the types of relationships that we saw in the last video um, describes uh, would be described by a different kind of graph. Okay, so the graph at a glance tells you a lot about the relationship between the two variables. So if you do an experiment and you come out with a graph that's a line, that means you had a linear relationship between those two variables. If you come out with a graph that is a hyperbola, that means you had an inverse relationship between those two variables. And finally, if you come out with a parabola, that means that you had a quadratic relationship between the two variables. Just keep in mind, you could have had a quadratic the way I showed in the graph right here, but you could also have one uh, that's curved like that. That would mean that the other variable is the one that's being squared. Okay, so that's just a little bit of background for why we're talking about graphs. Now we're going to be focusing in on the linear graph, because if you have a linear graph, the slope of the line describes how quickly your independent variable affects your dependent variable. <laughs> um, so in other words, here we have time and income. Okay, time would be our independent variable because that goes on the x-axis. So this is the slope of this line being fairly steep, meaning means that our dependent variable changes fairly quickly as time increases. In other words, our income increases fairly quickly as time increases. Okay, you see it going up there fairly quickly. All right, let's take a look at how to calculate the slopes, which is what you're all here for in the first place, right? All right, so the apprentice level. This one has lines going through the origin. All right, origin, of course, is zero, zero. So, but how do we calculate a slope? Many of you have done this in math, but here it is. For a linear relationship, the slope of a line describes how quickly the independent variable affects the dependent variable. And that's what we had already said. That's why we care about the slope. Slope is rise over run. That's a famous way of saying it. Rise means how far up and down the graph you go and run being how far across the graph you go. More mathematical would be the change in Y over the change in X. If you don't know this triangle is a symbol, uh, Greek letter Delta, Delta Y. Delta always means change in. So in this case, change in Y divided by change in X. What does that mean? Basically, here's how what I'm going to use. How much does the Y increase? or if it decreases, if the y decreases, it would be a negative value, divided by how much the x value increases. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Whoa, big graph, there we go. Okay, so if we take a look at this, first thing you wanna do is make sure you pick a point where you can tell what the x and the y are. Okay, so for example, this point here, you'd have to kind of estimate. It's about 12, 11. It's a little bit hard to tell. So instead, we chose to pick this point and this point, although actually it might be easier to pick the origin since this is going through the origin. That makes it even easier, <laughs> okay? So uh, we're measuring how much does the Y change? That's our first thing. That's what's gonna go in the numerator. Okay, so how much does the Y change? We can see that was written out for us over here. The Y changes by 20 meters. It started out here. It ended up here. Okay, and that's a change of 20 meters. Okay, of course, that might be a little bit easier to do if we chose this point and this point, because then we see it right here going from 0 to 20 is 20 meters. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that. This was 20 meters up here because it went from 20 to 40. 
and that's a change of 20. We just subtracted, right? And that's why it's delta y change in. But how much did it increase? It increased 20. It went from 20 to 40. Okay, so that would be our numerator, 20. And then always keep your units with you. Okay, 20 meters per second. And then if we look at the y value or the x value, the x changed for, for this one over here. It changed from 5 to 10. That means it increased by 5, so divided by 5 seconds. So this would have a slope of 20 divided by 5, which equals 4. And in this case, we'd have meters per second squared. We aren't focusing on units, but I can't help doing them because that's what a good physicist does. It keeps track of their units. Notice we also, for this bottom section, we also would have gotten a change in 5 going from 0 to 5. All right, let's go on to the next example, okay, um, which uh, has lines that don't go through the origin. Same idea, though. We want to get the change in y over the change in x. In other words, how much does the y change and how much does the x change? So let's go ahead and pick this point here, and then we could pick any one of these points. But since we got the 4 written here, let's go ahead and pick this point. You would not want to point pick that point, okay, because you can't tell. Is that three? Probably, maybe, okay, but you can't be completely sure. Okay, so once again, we are gonna pick this point and this point. So how much does the Y change? That's our first thing. Well, we went from eight to 16. Okay, so eight to 16 gives us eight degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then we wanna see how much the, x changes that's our next thing how much does the x change that's going to go in the denominator okay so the x goes from zero to four so from zero to four that's a change of four hours okay and so we get a slope of two degrees fahrenheit per hour now we know every hour it's going to change by two degrees fahrenheit whatever this is that this graph is describing Okay, so once again, the change in y divided by the change in x. All right, last example has, oops, last example has downward sloping lines. Okay, so downward sloping, what in the world's going to happen with a downward sloping line? All right, let's go ahead and pick, you know what, I kind of like picking this whole thing. Why? Because it went from 82 to 72. Makes the math so easy. Okay, so how much does the y change? Well, it went from 82 to 72. That's not an increase at all. That's a decrease. So that's going to be negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, because it went down, our y value went down, that means that um, it decreased. That means there was a negative change. Okay. Then we see that we started out at zero for time and went to five hours. So here we have five hours is our change in X. And so we get negative two degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Okay, so this one's cooling down two degrees Fahrenheit per hour. And no matter which of these dots you cho chose, you would have gotten the same answer. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy calculating the slopes. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please click that like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of 